Thank you so much, Philip Nelson, for joining us virtually. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Lamar. It's great to be here. I'd like to know what disciplines your students are coming from, those who take your class. Yeah, Lamar, I teach a class to a room full of uh, undergraduate students who are in their second year and higher, and they come from a lot of different majors. They come from biochemistry, uh, bioengineering, other engineering departments, biophysics, because we have such a major. They come from a lot of different majors, but they all want to learn something about modeling. And uh, they're all not afraid of being a little bit quantitative because we have a lot of students who are not afraid of that. And why is it so important for students to learn about modeling and simulation early in their careers? I think it's very important for people to study a little bit of modeling and simulation as early as possible in their careers. First of all, there's data visualization. Everybody's going to need that no matter what they do in the technical world. And it's not something that you get when you take computer science 101. We can't just tell them we'll take computer science 101. Also, I think every paper I read has some modeling and simulation. Even if it's in the supplementary information, that paper could not get published without it. And my students realize that and they know that they need those sorts of skills. Uh, I think modeling and simulation is very good for developing uh, intuition and for developing an insight into what questions should be asked and what experiment needs to be done. Now, are students with little computer experience still able to excel in your class? Every time I teach my class on the first day, I ask them to self-report on their computing skills and uh, how much coding they've done, and about half the class says zero. Yes, they are able to excel. We bring them up to speed. We have found that uh, Python is a language that they can get up to speed pretty quickly, and uh, we can just add a little bit every week. And to them, it's so much more exciting than just taking a computer science course where everything is done in the abstract. It's good to know how to make a graph. It's better to know how to make an animated graph because animated graphs have a plot line. They tell a story. And uh, as you can see in the animation that I'm showing right here, I personally never really understood adaptation and bacterial chemotaxis until I made this little simulation and turned it into an animation and watched the storyline. Then I can see the level of activation of the receptors. It's shown here in color. It's converging on some universal value. Whenever the level of chemoattractant is being held constant, that you get that rainbow color that you see in the graph. Uh, only when the level of chemoattractant jumps do you get a big change in the activation. How is that possible? Well, you can also see that in the graph as the bars move back and forth. That's the level of methylation. So by presenting more than one thing at a time in a time series, uh, that enters your brain in a very different way than reading a lot of words on the page, and students find that very powerful. And thank you so much for joining us, Philip Nelson.